Hello, welcome to the 416. My name is Lisa Rail, and for those of you who don't know, I am the director of First Step Learning Center here at Troy United Methodist Church. And today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about community and why it's important to be connected and in community with each other. So in order to do that, um, we're gonna go back in time just a little bit to when David and I moved here in 2006. Um, we didn't really have any friends here, but we, I did have extended family in the area. So my aunt and uncle and cousins lived here, and it was very easy when we got here to just start attending church with them where they were attending. Um, and so that's what we did. We were there for about four and a half years. We were faithful on Sunday mornings unless we were out of town, and we also um, attended a Sunday school class on Sunday mornings. But other than that, we did not really um, connect with anybody else. We didn't seek out a small group. We didn't connect with families um, outside of Sunday morning. So as you can imagine, after a while of being there, um, it just sort of still didn't feel like home because we weren't connecting with anybody. Nothing to do with the church at all. It was David and I not doing what we were supposed to be doing. But after a while, we just both felt that we weren't growing there and um, it just didn't feel like the right fit for us. And so about that time, I took over the job at Troy United Methodist Church as director. That was in the fall of 2013. I had some commitments to finish out until the spring um, at the church where we were attending. I was um, one of the directors in the children's ministry there. And so once I had finished that commitment out, we moved over to Troy United Methodist Church in the summer of 2013. We attended probably about a year and a half, two years um, in the same pattern that we had been in. We were faithful on Sunday mornings, um, but not really um, connecting anywhere outside of that. We had a little bit bigger circle because I was on staff then. So it, we knew a few more, I knew a few more people. So in turn, David, um, was meeting those people as well, but we weren't, we certainly weren't what I would call in community with anyone. Um, so after about two, two and a half years of being here, uh, one of the journey groups reached out to us and invited us to join them. And so we did, G uh, Jim and Julie Ford invited us to their house to um, be in a small group. We reluctantly went the first time, but um, felt very at home and very at ease right away that night. Um, our particular journey group meets every other week during the year, and then we take the summer off. But every other week, what we do is delve into the word that was given on Sunday morning. We talk a little bit more about it and what it meant to us. And then we have prayer time for each other and share what's going on in our lives, any um, trials or triumphs as we might call it. And then after we're all done with those things, we enjoy a time of fellowship and snacks, which everybody enjoys. And so uh, it didn't take us very long to be very comfortable and start enjoying that time with, the, um, I believe we have about 16 people, eight couples in the group now. So it seems kind of large, but um, we're not always all there. So generally it's about 12 of us that um, are at any one meeting. And I, we love it. We've met some really great people and um, shared with them and been a little bit more vulnerable than we are on Sunday mornings when we just attend church and go home. Um, after we had been attending a small group for a while. Uh, the church put out something called Dinner for Eight, which some of you might be familiar with. Um, others of you might not know what that is, but for us, it was a great opportunity to meet some more people in a very unassuming way. It's literally Dinner for Eight. It can be four couples or eight people or some couples and singles. Usually um, you fill out a survey, so they kind of put you together based on your ages, similarities in life, what's going on with you. Um, also, you can choose to either go out to eat every time or dine in each other's homes or a mixture of both. So according to whatever you answer on the survey, that's how you get connected. So we were connected with three other couples, and so you meet once a month for dinner, um, and we, did it and we did two in our houses and then the other time we went out for dinner 
So you just spend a few hours talking, enjoying a dinner together, getting to know each other, finding out what's going on in other people's lives, and making that connection so that when you come on Sunday mornings, it starts, all these little things start making it feel more like home, more like home every Sunday. Um, so after just a short time of being at the, the Methodist Church, we were already starting to feel like it was our home because we had made these connections and because we'd made ourselves vulnerable and did what God asked us to do. Um, there's a couple of verses that I wanted to read and some of you might know some of these. So Proverbs 27, 17 is probably pretty familiar to most of you. It says, so as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So when we're sharing and telling what we're getting out of verses, it might be something that someone else didn't see but that they need to hear at that time or it's just a different viewpoint on things and it makes us um, dig a little deeper, think a little harder on what we're reading and it's what God wants us to do. Um, Romans 12.5 says, So in Christ we, though many, form one body and each member belongs to all the others. Again, we're all supposed to be working together towards this common goal of um, being more like Christ. Matthew 18, 20 says, For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. So seeking out that community and following God's will in our lives to have that community and to work together to get to know each other and to dig more deeply into his word is not only a great way to feel more comfortable at church and get more friends and um, just enhance your life in that way but it's also following God's will for us and in the midst of doing that you are growing in Christ because you are challenging each other to look a little differently at scriptures that you're all seeing maybe in a little bit different way <clears throat> The last thing that I want to talk a little bit about is um, the bands that are forming that you've probably heard Pastor Andy talking about for the last several weeks. I recently joined a band. Um, and ex I'm really excited to um, take the next step, which is a little bit scary at first. I know when you read the description of what a band is, it's it can make it can be a little off-putting in the beginning to um, make yourself that vulnerable and share deeply with each other. But I promise you, if you just take the step and um, do it slowly, you know, at, at whatever you're comfortable with, it, you're gonna feel amazing and God is going to give you great blessings for that. So our band has not met yet, but we've talked a little bit, um, trying to figure out how often we wanna meet. And the parameters of your band can be a little bit loose in the beginning because you do need to get to know each other a little bit and and build a little bit of trust I think um, in order to be as vulnerable as we need to be when meeting together but just think about how awesome it's gonna be to have somebody praying for you each week knowing what you're going through because you shared and put it out there and they're lifting you up maybe daily and if not weekly um, lifting you up and holding you up and holding you accountable. I mean, I know for myself, it's a lot easier to make excuses when it's just me that I'm making excuses to. Oh, I'm just too tired tonight to get out the Bible. Oh, I don't want to read this morning. But if you have to have contact every week and talk to these people that are investing time in you and, and share with them, what you've done and what you've learned and what you've read in the word that week. I think it's an accountability that you're all going to be very thankful for as it makes you grow in Christ. Um, and just the friendships that I've heard about being made and how deeply these people are caring for each other is something I'm excited to um, get into with the ladies that I've joined with. So. I understand that it's a big step for some people. Maybe one of these things will help you make your first step, um, but please reach out if you are interested in joining a band or if you're interested in joining a journey group. There are lots of groups that are gonna be starting to meet again here pretty soon. Um, we might have to be doing it on Zoom, but um, 
it's still a great way to get to know each other and have that community at this crazy COVID time when we're a little bit challenged with getting out and, and seeing people and getting together. If you have this group already established, it's going to make it that much easier to make yourself vulnerable and share things with each other and just grow. Community is very important, and if you haven't reached out to someone yet, please reach out to Bonnie or Pastor Andy or myself, anybody on staff, and let them know that you're really seeking to join in a community of people, and we'll get you connected with um, someone you're comfortable with, and you will see a difference, I know, immediately. I know we have seen a difference in our lives through our journey group, and I just pray that each of you will take that step that you need to take to um, reach out and get connected. So if you'll just bow your head with me, and we'll say a prayer real quick before we go. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray that you will come into this church, Lord, and move us all to be connected, to love one another, to lift each other up, to challenge each other and to love one another, Lord. I just pray that you'll give us um, the opportunity, whether it be via Zoom or in person, to get to know each other and to love each other more and more every, every time we meet. Just pray that anybody that's out there that is feeling reluctant to reach out will have the courage to take that step and reach out to someone to get connected today. Jesus, we love you so much, and we just are so thankful for everything you pour into us. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, if you have any um, questions, you want to reach out, please do so. There's always somebody in the office now that we're back to a semi-normal, um, or you can reach out to any of us at our email addresses, which are most of us are our names plus at Troy UMC. So I'm Lisa at TroyUMC.org. Bonnie is Bonnie at TroyUMC.org. Um, so reach out and find a community within our community. Thanks.